It's Pride Week, so I'm here in New York, and it's World Pride, and we're celebrating the yes. 50th anniversary of, of the Stonewall Uprising, and I'm just so grateful to be an openly trans black woman really living my best life and living my living dreams out loud. Life. And it's, it's really incredible. And I feel I have we Orange is the New Black is coming back for its final season. I'm, I'm producing and, and it's a documentary and I'm moving into producing and developing some scripted stuff that I'm super psyched about. Um, there's a long list of things I'm going to be in that we can talk about later. But what I'm so excited about being here um, with BET again and being here with you is that I am a black trans woman. Yes. And this month, five black trans women have been murdered. Yes. We're celebrating Pride, and, and black trans, a lot of black trans women are still finding it hard to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there are so many black trans women who are really frustrated with our community of black folks who, that, that, that we say black lives matter, but do we mean black yeah. trans women's lives? We met um, and at the GLAAD Media Awards. You've written an article yeah. about Cece McDonald, a mm -hmm. black trans woman who um, ended up in prison for defending herself um, against an attack. And you called out the community then and said, we should be standing up for C.C. McDonald. And this was in 2012, you wrote it, I think. And I, we met in 2013. And there are still a lot of um, trans folks saying, where are, where is the black community when, we are, when we're dying? Yes. Um, and when we are um, struggling. And um, there's so many of us who have been at Black Lives Matter marches, who have stood up mm -hmm. when um, black folks have been shot by police. And a lot of us are wondering where the community is for us, and we, we're struggling. This administration now is, we were being banned from the military. Uh, yeah. um, they want to discriminate the consistent homeless shelters and in healthcare. It's, it's crazy right now. Trans people are literally under attack on a policy level and on the streets, and um, it's mostly black trans people. Well, in, in, in the matter of the black community, going back to that, what do you think is the biggest uh, barrier that needs to be crossed between maybe straight black men trans people, what do you think is the biggest barrier that, that we're not getting, that we need to cross in order for us to be unified? I think it starts with the humanity of, yeah. of LGBTQ people in general, the humanity of trans people. I think for my cis um, black sisters, my non-trans um, sisters, my womanhood is not a threat to, to any other woman's womanhood. Um, there is a history, I think we have to acknowledge the history and the trauma around how black womanhood is disavowed mm -hmm. in the United States. You know, when Sojourner Truth said, ain't I woman? In yeah. 1851, she was talking about the erasure of her womanhood and her blackness yeah. as, a, as a woman. And so there's a lot of this historic trauma around that. I think we have to heal yes. around that. And so I think a lot of um, black women see trans women and feel the history mm -hmm. of that disavowal mm -hmm. of, of black womanhood. And there's a pain and trauma there. I think hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to contend with how we've been hurt. And what I would say to black men is that, that your attraction to us is not, um, is not a reason to kill us. Mm. Your attraction to us is not a reason to kill us. Mm. We are, you know, wow. I've never, we don't need to fool anybody. It's 2019. There are plenty of folks. I'm single now, and I, there are many options for me as a black <laughs> trans woman. And, yeah. it's, and it's lovely. We don't need <laughs> to trick anyone. And, and there's a case, um, there's a, um, Michelle Williamson, I believe is her name, who was uh, murdered in Mississippi um, a few years back. And she was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, who was a Latin king. He was a gang member. And they had broken up, but he didn't want any of his gang member um, buddies to so find no. out that he had dated her. And so he killed her. Oh, my God. So, so the, that's one example. I'm not saying all, but the intimate partner violence is part of the reasons we, we're being murdered. I think there's issues of homelessness. And, and our unemployment rate is three times the national average, four times that for trans people of color. So it's an intersectional issue. You, but I think what I would say to our community is that this, it is not an affront to the race that I exist. Trans people, LGBTQ people have always existed mm -hmm. and we've, we're pushed to the margins. Now we're coming forward and able to live in the light. And that is not, um, it, it, it doesn't diminish our blackness. It doesn't diminish the community. It's a celebration. I come with my blackness, with my womanhood, and my transness. And I, my blackness is informed by our rich, beautiful history of black excellence. And I stand in that. Yeah. And I just, we need our community to stand with us mm. in that. Thank you so much for saying that. We got somebody writing in a, a question for you. Uh, phony Braxton. <laughs> phony Braxton. All right, tweeted. you know what? You try to be all serious. <laughs> yeah. Phony. All right, wait a minute. Phony, phony, phony Braxton. Phony. <laughs> then I think of Mark, then I think of Mark, Mark. I go down. Like, how does Laverne think her work 
uh, Amia's work and now Poe's effect, Amaya. Amaya, excuse me, work, and now Poe's effects will transcend the time and move transgender culture forward in the television industry, especially the minority transgender visibility we mm. now have. Well, well, Glad um, did a study that suggested 84% of Americans don't personally know someone trans, and so most of what um, folks learn about trans people is through the media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with Pose. I've Me been too. obsessed with Amaya Scott since before she was on Star. I just she got was her on book. Instagram. Did you, her, Amaya's book, um, Memoirs of a Mermaid, is it's juicy. Everything. Have I you read love it? Amaya. It's Amaya. I love her that she's just. She's t she speaks all of it. She's t talking about all of it in an unapologetic way, and she's brilliant and beautiful and just smart. Um, I think it's about, I think folks are seeing our humanity, and I think folks yeah. are connecting um, what I've experienced as being a trans actress on, on, you know, that people are connecting not only with the character that I play, but with me as a human being. Mm -hmm. And that is one of my favorite stories. I, met, I ran into a black trans woman and when I was shopping, like circa 2013, right after Orange came out, and she's like, hi, you know, I'm trans, and, um, and we, this is here in New York. And she said, I just wanted to tell you that my mother and I haven't talked for seven years. She didn't accept me as being, you know, my womanhood. And she watched Orange is the New Black, and she reached out to me for the first time in seven years. Wow. wow. 